Vince Russo, one of the most infamous and polarizing figures in wrestling history. He's worked for the WWF slash WWE, WCW, and TNA, but nowadays doesn't find himself involved in any major wrestling company. Today, we talk about the career of one of the most controversial wrestling personalities. What's going on guys, it's Tom or Top 10 Wrestling, and welcome to the rise and fall of Vince Russo. Before we get into it though, I would like to thank my Patreon backers, all listed here. For more exclusive content and perks, check out my Patreon, links down below. It would really help me during these trying times, and would be very much appreciated. But let's get into the video, where we talk about the rise and fall of Vince Russo, as as well as at the end, I give my personal opinion on Vince Russo. Enough wasting time, let's get into the video. Hey, this is your Olympic hero Kurt Angle, and you are watching Top 10 Wrestling. Oh, it's true, it's damn true. In 1992, Vince Russo was hired by the WWF as a freelance writer for the WWF magazine, and he would later become the editor for the paper in 1994, and then in 1996, he was promoted to the WWF creative team itself. It was during this time that WCW was destroying the WWF in the ratings and had nearly a two year long winning streak. Vince McMahon came to Russo for ideas and Russo suggested a more edgy product with swearing, sexual content and swerves bro, essentially taking influence from the Jerry Springer show. WWF basically reinvented themselves following Russo's suggestions and well, it worked. WWF overtook WCW in the ratings, Vince got promoted to head writer, and after just one year in the creative team, the WWF was thriving. Ed Ferrara came into the creative team and he and Russo clicked immediately and became a bit of a duo, but Vince Russo while driving ratings did have lots of critics for the way he changed the product you know, mainly Jim Cornette, and while he did do some great things such as contributing towards DX, the Stone Cold vs McMahon feud, he also masterminded things such as the Brawl for All, and because of this, he became a very polarizing figure in the wrestling business, both for wrestling personalities and fans alike. But regardless of people's opinions on him, the WWF was dog walking WCW in the ratings. However, in 1999, Vince Russo left the WWF for WCW along with Ed Ferrara, stating a dispute with Vince McMahon over his workload following the creation of SmackDown as being the reason. Vince Russo and Ed tried to extract their booking style from the WWF to WCW and well, it didn't really work. Constant turns, fake retirements, segments treated as shoots, constantly using insider terms and constantly jabbing at the WWF did not prove well. Also, they had Jushin Liger lose the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title on the show in a move not recognized by New Japan all the way until 2007 when it was finally recognized. Jesus Christ. However, in January of 2000, Russo would depart WCW after it was suggested he step down from head writer and the writing becomes a committee, which he declined and left the company. Just to come back three months later, and he came back and even more worse things happened. Such as him becoming an on-screen character and him winning the world title in what is easily one of the most criticised and most hated moments in WCW history. Vince Russo did indeed win the world title. The world title held by Sting and Scott Steiner and Booker T and Hulk Hogan, he won it. And it's many reasons like these that are cited as to why WCW died. It was also moments such as the Bash at the Beach incident. Hogan was booked to lose to Jarrett, but under his creative control clause, he blocked it. And so Russo booked Jarrett to literally lie down for Hogan, who pinned him, to which Hulk Hogan got on the mic and said, quote, This is why the company is in the damn shape it's in, because of bull like this. After this, Hogan never came back to WCW and filed a lawsuit against Russo which was thrown out. 
WCW eventually died later that year and Russo was once again out the company. In 2002, he returned to WWE, but left after two weeks, opting to go to this new company called TNA. So fun fact for you, Vince Russo is actually the one who came up with the name TNA and for the first few years during this time in the company, he served as an on-screen character and a writer. Or did he? Throughout these years, there was many reports of there being a power struggle in the creative team and Russo left the company after Victory Road 2004 and in an interview the next year said that he never wrote a single show during this period and said the whole thing was just a total nightmare. But of course, Russo wasn't done with TNA for good as he returned in 2006 where this time he was confirmed to be a part of the creative team. And while a lot of good happened in TNA, lots of bad happened too and it became a regular occurrence for the fans to chant fire Russo when something bad happened on TNA. This happened with the last rights match as well as the electric steel cage match. TNA in 2005 was seen as the best year for the company and 2006 and 2007 were both really good too but something you noticed with TNA was that as the years went on it progressively got worse. 2009 would serve as a reunion of sorts as Ed Ferrara came into the company and shortly after Hogan and Bischoff came in and Hogan and Russo reconciled 10 years after the bash at the beach incident and it's 2010 that is seen as one of the worst if not the worst year in TNA history with many of the same mistakes that WCW made being repeated such as pushing older talent and former WWE guys over their homegrown talent, overbooking, swerves and of course the worst of all failing to capitalize on D'Angelo De Niro. By October 2011, Russo had stepped down as head writer and in February 2012, it was confirmed that he was out of the company and that was it for Vince Russo in TNA. Or was it? In April 2014, PW Insider reported that Russo was secretly working as a consultant for TNA. These reports were of course denied by Russo, but in July, Russo accidentally emailed PW Insider with instructions of how TNA commentary works and as a result on his website had to admit that he was indeed working for TNA. Two weeks later he stated he left the company and shortly after stated he had been working with the company since October of 2013. This secret rehiring was seen as one of the biggest reasons why Spike TV dropped TNA from their network. Since leaving TNA in 2014, Vince Russo has never really worked for a major company since as a writer, nor has he appeared in it as a character for any major company. But let me give my opinion on Vince Russo. The moment you've all been waiting for, you know, in the past, I've made videos about Vince Russo's ideas, which have done very well, by the way. Like, literally, my last video has Vince Russo in the thumbnail. You know, being a TNA channel, I naturally talk about him a lot, but I never have given my thoughts on him as a whole, so that's what I'm gonna do now. My overall thoughts on Vince Russo is that, well, I see why he's polarizing. He did lots of good things, he did lots of bad things, but there's one thing I will say about him that might annoy a lot of you, and that is that overall, I think people like Vince Russo in the long run can be good for the wrestling business. Now I know what you're saying, I know many people stopped watching TNA because of him, but the fact is when Vince Russo is there writing for a company, it becomes unpredictable. There's intrigue, and while there's lots of awful stuff, there can be good stuff too. And honestly, if Monday Night Raw, if Vince Russo replaced Bruce Pritchard as the executive administrator of Monday Night Raw, I would probably be more inclined to watch it. And again, he's done lots of bad things, and I am just indifferent on him. That's literally it. I see why he's a polarizing figure. I see why he splits opinions, because personally, he split my opinion. I get why companies wouldn't hire him, I get why people don't like him, I get why people do like him, I get why companies would hire him, that's, that's just it for me. Anyway guys, that's it for this video, if you did enjoy then be sure to smack that like button, subscribe for notifications on so you never miss a video, comment down below what video you want to see next, 
and yeah follow me on twitter at talk to wrestling my instagram is at i'm tom bell check me out on patreon link down below check out my podcast links down below i'll see you all soon goodbye and keep on rolling Sleeping on me at my feet is where you'll lay Into your head down on your knees like you pray It's cool, I'll continue to kick, push like Lupe But if you ain't grinding with me, now the grind is where you'll stay They want me quiet, you can watch me be discreet Now I'm silent when I speak, mama telling me